I'm now going to set the crosscut sled up and make a crosscut on the table saw. You can also use a miter gauge, which I mentioned several times at this point, but here's a miter gauge. There is a little miter gauge on the back of this, and you can zero it out on that. Um, that can get you close, but I do suggest using a square to set it up. So in order to set up the crosscut sled, I'm going to loosen this wheel, make sure it moves freely, but I want to make sure that the actual crosscut sled mechanism is securely fastened to this plate. Um, sometimes this screw here will get loose, so if you can move the actual plate underneath, that's an issue. So this is secured tightly. I have this one loosened. I'm going to take out the throw plate and remove the riving knife. You can put the throw plate back in if you want. It'll help keep things kind of lined up. I'm then going to raise the blade all the way up so I get more area to measure off of. This is easier to do with a rip cut blade because the rip cut blade's teeth are further apart. You can do it with some of the cross cut blades. I'm going to press the fence, or the square, sorry, against the fence and slide it over until it touches the blade. Now I want to make sure it's touching continuously along the back and touching flush all the way along the length right here. And it's not being interfered with by one of the teeth. If you're having difficulties telling if this is set up properly, you can use a scrap of paper as a feeler gauge and make sure it doesn't fit. So here I have a scrap of paper. I ripped it off in this case. You don't have to do that. Um, if the paper fits in, that means it's not flush all the way against. So it's flush on the back, but there is a small gap in the front by three or so thousandths. So I have to twist this slightly and make sure there's no gap in the front now. And then when you're getting closer to having it set up, it's a good idea to tighten it down and then inspect it because if you inspect it beforehand and then tighten it, it might move slightly. Um, so before I do the paper test this time, I'm going to tighten the hand wheel here and then test and see if it's actually um, lined up properly. So I've tightened it. It doesn't fit on the front, but now it does slightly in the back. I may go ahead and go with that. It fit a little bit once, but now it doesn't seem to be. Um, so I'm going to cut this, and then I'll just double check afterwards that it's actually set up square. So I have it tightened already, and I've already um, checked to make sure that it's square. So I'll put this back. Now that the fence is square, I'm going to set up to make an 11 and, 11 and 3 quarter inch cut, I think. Yep, we'll do an 11 and 3 quarter inch cut. These little fences on here, um, stop locks, sorry, they are a little loose when you tighten them down. Make sure you have it mechanically locked out when you take your measurements so that you're measuring when it's all the way pushed back. Um, they don't have a lot of play when they're tight, but make sure it's pushed all the way where you need it. Uh, the scale on here is not necessarily accurate. Students move these things around, so don't trust this scale. I'm going to rest the ruler on a tooth of the blade so it's pushed all the way against. And then I'm going to make sure this is mechanically locked out that direction and take my readings from out here. These are a little difficult to get lined up because you can't touch the setup block directly to the part. So I usually do have to make one or so test cuts, but we'll see how close I got. I'm going to press the stock lightly against the stop lock and then push it down and then just slide gently across. And I'll wait for it to slow down all the way. So now it's finished cutting. I'll just double check my measurement before I make a lot of cuts. So it looks like I'm visually right at 11 and 3 quarters. Once you have the cross cut sled set up and you think it's perpendicular, you can make a cut and make sure you remember which edge was being referenced as you made the cuts. So I'm going to take it over the, the height gauges. I can stand it up and measure it, and then I know which orientation it's going to come back. You could also sketch them on the part. Um, and then you can see if it's angled outward or angled inward. That'll help you correct this. So you want to make sure you have an idea if it's, it needs to go in or out as you're setting it up. 
So I went over the height gauge and I measured my part and it is around 11 inches, 0.765, so 15 thousandths out on this side and then it was a little bit more on this side, um, 11 inches, 7.75. So it's around 10 or 12 thousandths worth of um, perpendicularity that I'm out on this. So that means this isn't quite square. You could also hear that when I was cutting, at least in person, you could hear the cut change pitch as it went across. So this is not square by more than 10 thousandths. Um, and I set it up within 10 thousandths of accuracy on one try. If you dial it in, if you're making a bunch of repeated cuts, you can get it to be repeatable. Um, but this is just a little fiddly to set up. So setting up the table saw between the fence for ripping is pretty consistent. Um, setting this little stop block here is a little finky. An alternate way you can set up these set blocks, I have this one loosened, um, is I can set it on a piece of stock so now I'm physically able to set on the uh, stop block and then I can bring it up to a tooth of the blade and then I can adjust it over. So I know I was slightly over earlier by about 10 thousandths and it visually looked like it was over by about 64. So these are a little fiddly to get set up just right but hopefully this is a little more accurate. Another approach that you can use, it depends on how much of your stock you're cutting off. Some people do like to use a block of wood on the fence and measure on this side. So if I have a longer piece of stock and I want to cut out pieces from it and they're going to be 10 or inches long, 10 or so inches long, um, I can measure, I guess I got to do this first, between this set block here and the fence or in the blade. So this would be a eight and three quarter inch cut. I can move this back here. Now I can take a longer piece of stock. I can butt it up against this reference mark right here, this reference feature, and I can make cuts that will be reliably that height. Um, you can never touch this directly against the fence. Um, that will be stuck between two movable objects and it can cause the part to bind. So you're never going to measure from the fence to the blade and then press it over like this. You always want this little clearance gap so that nothing can bind up. So if you wish to cut larger pieces, you can measure them and cut them off a large piece of stock like this, or you can use the set blocks and you can take a piece of material and you can cut off a small chunk from this side. So either way will work. Another way you can use the table saw to make cross cuts without using the cross cut sled is just to use a miter gauge. These are on each one of the table saws. And you can take a scrap piece of wood, screw it to that, and make like a temporary sacrificial fence. So you can take a piece of material, run it along here and make a cut, and then it'll cut into this and support both the off cut piece and the primary piece, and you can run that 